Hey guys, welcome back to the Glory Living channel. My name is Hannah, and today we are talking about seed starting. All things seed starting, the very basics to give you the best success in your garden this spring. Okay guys, let's get started. If you're a new gardener, you might be questioning whether you even want to start your own seed or whether you just want to walk into a nursery and buy your, some plants for your garden. Well, if you're only planting a few plants, that might be fine to just go buy whatever plants that you want. But if you plan on having any amount of larger scale garden going on, I think that starting seeds is just the way to go. A few reasons. One, I do think it's more cost effective, especially in the long run. But I also believe that it gives you more varieties for what you want to grow and gives you just more options. When you walk into a nursery, you're not going to have as many options for things like even beans or cucumbers. You might have a few, but the amount of seeds that you can buy and the different varieties that exist online are just amazing. And there are so many fun options that you can grow and things that you can do that are specific to your area and that might be just aspects or varieties that you personally would like. So I do believe that seed starting is the way to go. And honestly, I just love it. It's so much fun. And it's amazing to watch these plants grow before your eyes, to just see them from seed into harvest. It's just really amazing. So seed starting for me is the way to go. And today I wanna to talk about the supplies that you're going to need for starting seeds, some tips and tricks along those lines of those supplies. There is so much information we could cover and I'm trying to try and keep it so it doesn't get way too long of a video, but I wanna give you the information you need. I might do further videos where it's like a step-by-step -step seed starting or another video that talks about the issues that you may run into seed starting, but I'm gonna reference some of that here so that you feel prepared in starting your own seeds in your house. Okay, so plant 101, the basics of growing anything. There are three things that your plants need. Okay, so they're gonna need water, they're gonna need light, and they're gonna need nutrients, okay? So I'll, oftentimes those nutrients come from the soil. And so sometimes when you're taught about plants, you just say, hey, they need soil, they need water, they need light. Um, the soil is really just another way of saying they need nutrients and soil is typically where those plants are getting those nutrients. But we're gonna talk about all these and break these down and how you are gonna bring these into either your house or on your back porch, your garage or whatever you're starting your seeds and how to do that successfully in the things that you're gonna need. Okay, so as I said, you're going to need um, some type of light source. And so we're gonna talk about that and get into the details of the light source you're gonna need. You're gonna need a way of watering your plants. And we're gonna talk about the best way to do that. There's two ways that I would recommend doing that. Um, and then you're also going to need containers to hold your um, soil and your plants in. And then another thing that you're gonna want is a heat source as well, because Germination, getting your seeds to germinate to sprout, sometimes can be a little finicky depending on what you're trying to grow. And they like heat, certain things like heat. So we'll talk about that as we go. I'm also gonna put a link in the description to some of the things that I'm gonna reference here. If you wanna go check them out on Amazon, um, feel free to do that. Um, but I'm just gonna show you some of the things that we use while starting our seeds. So let's get started. Let's start with light. Okay, so normally the light that plants are using to grow would be the sun. And the way God has made that is just perfect with all the spectrums, makes it perfect for plants to grow on its own, right? Well, here's the deal. In lots of houses, there is not a perfect place to get a perfectly sunny spot. And a lot of people do not have greenhouses, right? So it's hard to get a perfectly sunny spot to just use the sun to grow your plants. It's not impossible. Everybody's house is different. I can tell you though, in my house, it is pretty much impossible. One of the issues that you will run into that you want to avoid with your small plants is a term that you might hear called leggy. If your seedlings get leggy, that means they've gotten very long and thin and they're not very strong. They're just super long and thin and they're bending towards the sun. If you have them in a window that's not getting a ton of sunlight, you will see them like arched over and curved. Your tomato plants, your peppers, will be curving over, reaching for the sun. And so if you wanna avoid that, you wanna get another artificial light that's gonna mimic the sunlight. And that's what I'm gonna show you what I use um, for my grow lights. So like I said, it's not that it's impossible to just use sunlight in your house. And it's, I think even finding a nice sunny spot can be a help, helpful additive to also having your grow lights. But um, if it's just not possible, because sometimes even if you have a sunny spot, it's not a place you can put a little table. So 
for me, I have two real lights that I use. The first year that we ever started seeds, we were very poor and we could not afford to get a really nice grow light. And if you've seen grow lights, sometimes they can be really pricey and that was pretty discouraging to me. But you can get a light bulb that goes as a grow light into a lamp. So we have this old reading lamp that I had on like the side of my bed when I was younger and just had it. And you can get a light bulb like this and you could put it in um, a lamp, like a reading lamp if you had that on hand. If you had a garage clamp light, that is a way you put one of these light bulbs in there and use it that way. But um, as we were blessed and able to afford something a little bit more, I got one of these. So this, I got this from Lowe's, but this is um, by a company called Good Earth and it is a two foot long LED grow light. This grow light I really like. And the reason why I really like it is one, it's long, it covers better over the plants. They're not gonna be reaching sideways and becoming leggy because I can put the light directly on top of them. That's what I really like about this. Additionally, what I like about this is um, there's timers on this if I want to do a timer. So they're not, you don't want your plants to get light 24 7. You want this to mimic like day and night. So it has a timer on it that you can set for your plants. It also has the different type of light spectrum. So we could do just the plain white, I say plain white light, the white light, which is going to have all the spectrums and you have blue or red or a mix of the blue and red. You can mix them all together and get kind of whatever you're trying to go for. Um, we can talk about this maybe in another video. On the back of this box, it even explains the different spectrums and what they do for plant growth, like the different spectrums, whether what's good for germination, what's good for flowering and fruit production. And so that's something that I just like. I like having those options and I really have enjoyed this grow light and I think it's been really good. It also comes with chains so you can hang it. That's the only thing that is a little bit not as fun about this is that you just have to you have to MacGyver or something over top of your table to hold your grow light. If you're doing these on shelves, that's not really very hard to figure out. If you're doing it over a desk table, like I was last year, or you should have seen the thing, the ways we were growing them last year, trying to find just a spot in our tiny house. But that can be a little bit of a pain where if you have a light with a clamp on it, that's a little bit easier to figure out. But I still think that this is a superior grow light. So I really like this. Um, even though we built a little greenhouse, the problem with greenhouses, um, like in most people's areas, is that if at nighttime, if you don't have that greenhouse heated, it's still going to be very chilly. And so there are things you can do to heat those up and things you could do to help that. But um, you're still probably going to have to start some seeds, for us at least, indoors. And so I really like these grow lights. I really think they work really well. And I'll try and see if I can find a link to this one or something very similar to put down for you to check out. Okay, so next on the list, something that I want to talk about, which is not in necessarily the three essentials, but it's kind of connected to light in the sense that it is heat. And so these plants need heat. Um, your light is not going to warm up your plants. It's not like the sun. It's not like being outside. So when you are germinating plants, especially things like herbs and peppers, which are very sensitive to their germination temperatures, um, their temperatures that they need to germinate, then you're going to want a heating pad. Now, if you just have a heating pad that you use for um, like medical reasons or, you know, for aches and pains and things like that, you can use that. The problem is they have an automatic shut off. It's like a safety feature that's going to make them turn off. And so you'll have to go on and turn them on throughout the day because they're going to automatically turn off. And I don't know how long that lasts, but that can be kind of annoying. And unless you have an old one, um, all the newer ones are going to pretty much come with that. So they do make heating pads that are made for um, growing plants and starting seeds. And they're really nice because they are super long. As you can see, this is a very long one. This is not what a normal heating pad at your house looks like. And it does not have an automatic shutoff and it stays at the right temperature for germinating plants. So it's not gonna get too hot. It's not gonna be too cold. And it's just gonna be that perfect amount of heat that you could put under your trays full of your plants and it'll help keep them warm. This is, um, I think, really helpful. And I think it's really good and important to keep soil temperatures correct and also to help that water evaporate a little bit um, so things are not just sitting there. You don't want them to get, you want to control your temperatures um, for your plants so that they're not getting too humid. Um, but this is really important, mostly for germination. To get them to germinate and to pop up, you're going to need a little bit of heat under them, especially like I'm talking about with peppers, herbs, things like that. Herbs especially are very finicky. But peppers, a more common thing that everybody's probably growing in their garden, are something that can be a little bit picky as well, and they like that heat for germinating. So I think this is another thing to have on hand when you're starting seeds to make sure that they stay warm enough. 
Some people have also put them on top of their fridge or places like that. But when you're, if you need light, not all seeds do need light to germinate, but if they need light to germinate, then that's going to make that a little hard for you. So I think investing in a heating pad is very helpful when germinating and starting your own seeds. An important fact that it needs to go hand in hand with the heating mat is you don't want to necessarily keep your heating mat up all the time because if you do that, that can cause some legginess as well in your plants and you don't want them to get too warm. So as soon as they germinate, you can take that heating mat off and you can just let them do their thing and be fine without so much heat. Okay, let's talk water. Water is crucial for the starting of seeds and it is one of really the most important parts because, you know, as far besides light, the water is so crucial because you know what? Um, you can you can start seeds, uh, many seeds. You could just start on a wet paper towel in a bag on a window, okay? Um, if as long as it has that light and moisture, they're going to most likely germinate. What we see here is that the water is super crucial, but the, without the water, you're not going to get germination. Talking about water, here's what I do not recommend. What I do not recommend is that you just get, like I have done in the past, a little, like one of my kids' little watering cans and watering over top heavily over your seedlings, especially very young ones. And there's a few reasons why I don't recommend that. One is because, believe it or not, those little water droplets are going to beat up your little seedlings. It's just going to be kind of hard on them. Um, and number two, you don't want to overwater seedlings. They're in very small pots. Um, no matter what you're starting in, it's not a ton of room in your pot. You do not want them to get too watered. And what happens if they get too watered? One is that they can get um, kind of a root rot. Um, you can get just funguses. You can get gnats in there. You don't want to have to deal with that. And when you have too much moisture going on in your soil, that's what's going to happen. So another solution to that, or two solutions to that is one, I think when first starting, especially before germination, uh, I think having like a spray bottle, something like this, or something where you can really, really control how um, you're spraying. And when they're very young seedlings, I think a spray bottle can work really well. Um, some people would recommend um, doing bottom watering, which is where you pour the water in your tray that's underneath your pots. And um, that allows for the soil to soak up the water and for the roots to grow deeper into your plants. So there are benefits of watering like that. But how do you know whether your plants need water? Well, this is a little bit of an experience thing that can come in handy, and it's just something that you're gonna learn over time. But if it is dry, 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 like what I, I use seed starting mix, that is a very, very dry medium. And when you use that, I mean, peat moss is like, you could blow it and it's just gonna dust all over the place. And so you do not want it that dry. You need, they want some moisture. I know people don't like the word moist, but you just, you just got to get over that because you definitely want a moist, you want that soil moist. So um, you do not want it too wet. If you could squeeze out water out of your soil, way too wet. You do not want too much moisture going on. If you have heat and moisture and not a lot of airflow, you are begging for disease. So be careful. Make sure that you're not watering too much and make sure that you have a good amount of airflow. This might seem like an odd thing to bring up with water, but I also recommend some type of airflow. If you are not in a place with good air circulation, then get a little fan on top of your seedlings. And I think that helps with trying to keep the moisture from um, building up too much. What if in case you're new to this and you're worried you are going to water too much, this can help with, I think this can help a little bit with that keeping things dry. Also, it's going to help strengthen your seedlings so that they can handle that wind as they go outside. Um, some people brush over some of their seedlings while I touch them and teach them to be stronger. I know that sounds crazy, but it's stuff that actually works. So a little fan can be really helpful in helping keep airflow. Do not put them in a place where it's really, really stuffy. And you might think that that's a silly thing, but guys, I have been there. Um, in our tiny house, it is hard to find places to put our seedlings. I had them under a desk with the light so I could hook up the light because I could not figure out in the space that I had them where I could hook up the grow light. And then because the grow light was so bright, I put a tablecloth over the desk. Guys, oh man, I was asked. I mean, it's literally, I might as well have just somehow found diseases to spread all over them. Like, I don't even know, like a disease plant because that's pretty much what I did. I got them way too moist, way too stuffy, no airflow. And I've killed seedlings that way. And I don't want you to have that. So I definitely think good airflow doesn't mean you need a fan, but they can be helpful to keep the air circulating, to keep it flowing, and to help things not get too hot, muggy, moist, and cause disease in your seedlings. But they can also be avoided with making sure 
that it helped, maybe not totally avoid it if you still don't have good airflow, but it was definitely helped by not over watering your plants. They don't want too much water. Uh, if you see your plants yellowing, something is wrong. That is a sign that too much water might be not enough water. So you just have to see your dirt. If your dirt's soaked and your plants are yellow, that might mean that you overwater them. If it's dry and they're a little yellow, it might mean that you underwater them. So you want them to be that beautiful fresh green. You don't want them to be yellow. That is a warning sign to you that you need to fix something because yellow is not a good healthy plant. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is nutrients. Since we talked about water, I want to talk about nutrients because I think those can also go hand in hand if you decide to fertilize your plants. Um, and, and along with the nutrients, we want to talk about soil. So what are we going to be growing our plants in. And I'm going to show you containers last of all, just because I think this is kind of the best way of flow in this conversation. What should you use for nutrition for your plants? Okay, so when a seed first starts, it actually has nutrition. It actually has all that it needs in its seed, okay? But that those nutrients that it has do not last forever. So it is not made to last forever. It is made to get it started and to break through and to just get established, but then it needs more. So um, there is a lot of disagreement on how to do this. And honestly, I think just do the best you can, but there are some tips on what not to do that I'm going to tell you. So as far as nutrients, um, that comes from what type of soil you're going to use and potentially if you're going to fertilize. So let's get into that. Okay, so here's the controversy, right? Do we use seed starting mix? Do we use potting soil? Do we, what do we use? Okay. Listen, all good gardeners have probably used all of these different things, all right, and still had success, okay? So here's, here's the deal. I use seed starting mix, and the reason I use seed starting mix is just because I have also had kind of bad experiences in the past using um, different tops, types of soil. I don't think it was the soil's fault. I think it was my fault and my experience. But I like seed starting mix because it is, it is made to be super light and fluffy and able to let your seedling sprout and not get stuck on things. Other people like to use potting soil, and I understand why. A, pot, a good potting mix um, has nutrients more in it, like a fertilizer in it, um, something that is going to feed your plant once the seed needs more. And so there's definitely benefits to using a potting mix. The only thing that comes with an extra step with potting mix is you have to sift it. And the reason you have to sift it is because sometimes potting mix is going to come with like chunks of bark or wood in it that haven't decomposed. And listen, all companies are going to be different. Not all brands are going to be created equal. You need to be able to figure that out yourself and kind of figure out what you like. Um, but I would get, if you're going to do a potting mix, a good organic potting mix, and then you're going to want to sift your soil. Um, get some type of screen to do that with. Nothing too big, nothing too small. And that'll help get a nice fluffy soil and take the big chunks out. If you have a big chunk of bark or wood or whatever in your soil, um, it, it's going to make your plant have a hard time germinating and have a harder time setting its roots throughout the soil because it's going to be so hard and so stuck. I um, once got used a soil. I mean, it might have been a raised. I wonder if it was a raised bed mix even. And it, that's even worse. So the, um, when, when you get into like raised bed mixes or garden mixes or things that are meant for larger spaces, you're going to have bigger chunks in them. And that's because they're for more established plants. But a seed starting mix or a potting mix are better and are for seed starting than anything else. But if you use the potting mix, you still need to sift it. Don't forget to do that because otherwise you're going to get something that might be too chunky for your plants to grow. If you want to just avoid that altogether, then a seed starting mix. This is what I use. It's a Jiffy Organic. It's Omri approved um, seed starting mix. So this the, what's nice about this is it had it's peat moss. It's got um, the coconut like shavings in there and then vermiculite. And the point of this is to help keep moisture in, to keep it light and fluffy. And that's why they design these. Um, but people don't always like these because some of them do not have fertilizer in them. The reason why some people don't like the seed starting mix, like I'm saying, is because some of them do not come with um, a fertilizer or nutrients for your plants. And if that is the case and you feel like your plants are going to need more nutrients, then you're going to want to fertilize. But this is where you have to be really, really careful. Fertilizing your plants when they're so young um, can be a little tricky. If you choose to do that, I would get something natural to fertilize them with and I would dilute it like crazy. Because if you give them too much, you can kill them. Too much nitrogen will absolutely, what we call, burn your plants, okay? They will make them so that they turn yellow and die and are just way overrun with nitrogen and then it's just too much for them and it really actually hurts them. 
So they need a good balance in their soil. And so if you choose to fertilize them, it would be in your best interest to um, do a little research on what is a good, natural, very mellow fertilizer for seedlings because they don't need a ton and they're a very small pot. We'll get into that in a second. But potting mix can be beneficial because it has more nutrients already in it and it might help you kind of avoid that extra step of fertilizing. It's all in preference, it's all in what you want to do. I know sometimes it can be a little tricky starting plants and we feel a little overwhelmed because yellow just means bad, right? It's like too much water, not enough water, too many nutrients, not enough nutrients, how do I know? And, and that a lot of that is gonna come from experience and just knowing, well, what did I do or didn't I do? And so I like to use seed starting mix, but um, that's not everybody's cup of tea. I will say, if you go to use seed starting mix because it is so fluffy and it is so dry, inside this bag, you're gonna wanna, when you cut open your bag and you're getting your soil out, I would put it into a bucket, a container, a little pan, whatever that you have, and add water to it before you ever put it in your containers because otherwise it's gonna be a real pain in the butt to get the water soaked in. It's good to get it wet before you put it into your container. And remember, not dry, but also not so much that you can squeeze out the water, just a good amount of moisture so your seeds can get started. Okay, so just to summarize the difference between the seed starting mix and the potting mix. Potting mix, you're gonna have that more nutrition that comes already maybe in your potting mix, but you're gonna wanna stiff it out. So I totally understand why people use potting mixes, and at some point I may do that too. But there's nothing wrong with the seed starting mix either. So if you choose to do the seed starting mix, um, just remember that you might need to do a little bit of fertilizing in a few weeks. They're not going to need them immediately. As Remember that the seed has nutrients in it as it's getting started. Once it pops up, and maybe once it shows some true leaves, we can talk about that in a later video what that means. But once you have those true leaves, you can maybe start fertilizing after a few weeks, okay? I would give them a few weeks before you start adding any type of fertilizer. You don't want to overwhelm those tiny little seedlings with too much nitrogen so that they get burned. But you do want them to be able to flourish and get as big as possible and be as healthy as possible so when they go in the garden, they are ready to get started. Okay, let's talk containers to grow in. So I am a big believer that anybody and everybody should try to grow at least something. And so I really believe that whatever is most cost effective and easiest and available to you is what you should go with and not feel any guilt from anybody's strong opinions online. But um, I'll tell you this, the very first year that we gardened, uh, I, we, like I referenced, we did not have a lot of money and really if that is like an understatement. Um, so I was just trying to use what we had. I had these containers, these like de almost kind of like degradable uh, recycled material containers that were also made to hold some of water. And they, I got them from the hospital after having my first child. And they had, um, they, they were for like washing out bottles and things like that. And I had been given just a few extra when I left. And so I had those, they had given us these. And I had those and I thought, these are like perfect for starting seeds in. For me, it was. And I just put, I put the soil in there, the seed starting soil, and I just spread out my seeds and they were all growing in one pot in this one like pan. And that's what I used and it worked totally fine. And you could do that with a leftover like catering pan or something, whatever you have. But I'll show you some other options of things that are affordable and also what I have been using. Another thing of using what you have on hand is, this is from last year from someone who, um, I'm from a new friend who gave me some of her amazing heirloom tomato plants, Greek yogurt, okay? You got a yogurt container, it doesn't have to be Greek yogurt. You got a yogurt container, you got sour cream containers, use them, you can use them. One old Dixie cup, this is literally has dirt from last year from a tomato plant. This, you could use these and you just put some little holes in there for draining of the water and or for also sucking the water up if your water from below, whatever. These work great, okay? So putting in, uh, using containers from things that you already have used or uh, and just wanna recycle them, reuse them from your food that you're eating, whether that is, you know, yogurt containers, whether that's sour cream containers, cottage cheese containers, whatever, mini ice cream containers, whatever, whatever your thing is that you like, that you buy that's around this size, you can use them. You have on hand, save stuff. Don't be afraid to recycle things and don't be afraid that it doesn't look exactly like some huge YouTuber that you've been watching. Just use whatever you have on hand. And, and when you get to a place or if you are in a place where you can afford something a little more that you can spend some money on, then you can get some pots. Let me show you what I use. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you straight up that um, this is what I start them in, but I do not love these containers. They are, once again, something that I could afford at the time, 
and that I'm going to reuse until they are totally broken apart and then I'll maybe you know get something a little bit nicer but these are just like the small like 72 cell containers that you can get from like Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, whatever and sometimes they even come with a seed starting mix I think. I use these and then I move them up to larger containers. So this is what I start mine in and then I move them up into containers like this. So I think these these are either two inches or two and a half inch pots that I use. You can get these on Amazon like in huge packs. If you're going to start a ton you can you can do this. Um, these are like four inch pots and when I was opening up my gardening I was like I did not even know where I got these. These must have been leftovers from some family getting some going to a plant nursery and, and, and save these for me. So I'm excited to use these. These seem a little bit even thicker and heavier duty. Why have the bigger ones? You cannot, if you start them in these 72 cell ones, which are nice, they have the tray underneath and they have a little dome for the greenhouse effect to kind of keep the moisture in or whatever and to keep them warm. If you do that, um, you're gonna wanna put them into bigger containers. The plants will outgrow this and you don't want them to get too root bound and that can stunt their growth. What does that mean? It means that um, the roots were literally filled up as much as possible and thought we have nowhere else to go and no room to grow. This is as big as we're going to get. And so you want to be able to make sure they have room to grow. And that's why even people, you've, you'll hear of um, people growing in these Dixie cups for like, you know, decades. And that's just what they use because that has enough room in it. But um, something like this, this is, I think, as big as you need to go if you're not going super long, if your seed's starting. And you don't want to start things way too early because you don't want to have to maybe pop them up so many times. But if you do start them a little bit early, just know you're going to need something at least this big to be growing them in. Um, the nice thing about this, you can put your little masking tape on there, label them, make sure you label them. Guys, you will not remember. You will not remember. Your kids will come, they'll be playing with them or they'll twist them around or you'll twist them around or you'll be watering, you'll be rotating things. You will not remember what seeds are what. So guys, label, label, label. Don't trust your brain, okay? Your brain it has way too much to remember. It cannot remember your tomato varieties. So make sure you label them. And um, yeah, I think these are really great. I know there are people who really don't like to grow in plastic. Um, I'm just not at a place where it bothers me enough to change that. I'm not trying to irritate anybody by saying that. Uh, I have done a little bit in the peat moss containers. I don't know. I, I'm not like, I don't absolutely love those, but I don't hate them. Um, and that's and that's about as far as I've gone. I don't think I'd want to buy those peat moss containers all the time. I, I, I just don't see myself doing that. But if I can have something that I can reuse for years and years and years, then I like that. I feel like that saves me money. And um, so that's what I've done. And uh, yeah, I think these are really good. I like these. I got these off Amazon. I'll put you. I'll put a link in to, for you if you plan on growing a ton of plants like I do and starting a ton of seeds like I do. Okay, so going over this again, what do you need? You need light. You need water. You need nutrients. Okay, and those things are going to come from a good grow light or a really perfectly sunny spot. Making sure that you're watering just enough, but not too much to overwhelm them. Good soil, whether that's a good potting mix that you've sifted out or whether you do seed starting mix and give them a little bit of diluted fertilizer. These are gonna be the three main keys to having a successful seed starting experience and to get your garden off to the best start possible. Guys, I think that if you are watching this video and you are already wanting to garden and start some seeds, that's awesome. Keep at it, don't get discouraged. You're gonna have some failures and it'll always help you learn and know what you're doing better next year. And it can be so discouraging in the time that when it messes up and when things go wrong, trust me, I've had a lot of those, but just keep going, keep pushing through, and you will be surprised at how much the Lord will bless you in your efforts and in your labor. So keep going, keep trying, and um, don't get discouraged. And I know that sometimes it can seem even overwhelming with all this information, but guys, you just make sure you get water and light and good soil with those plants, and you're going to do just fine. Guys, thank you for watching this video. I so appreciate it. Please like the video. Please share it with your friends and your family. And as always, please subscribe to the channel. This is the best way you can support me and what I'm doing in creating this content for you. And um, guys, I'm just so grateful for those of you who are watching and coming back. And just please remember to share this video and like it. And leave a comment. Leave a comment in some of the failures that maybe you've had with seed starting or some of the tips that you have, the things that you have learned. Um, we can always benefit, all of us from tips and I have enjoyed hearing tips from you guys in the comment section and things that you have done. I love learning from you guys as well. So thank you so much for watching the video and until next time guys, we'll see you soon. Wait.